Hi, I'm Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to discover everything we need to know about point color in Lightroom Classic. To understand how point color works, I'll start with these swatches. Let's say that I want to adjust the light red swatches differently than the dark red swatches. Well, if I use Color Mixer, all of the swatches change, regardless of their luminance or saturation values, and that's because Color Mixer selects color based on only one dimension, and that's hue. In contrast, the new point color allows the selection of color in three dimensions, hue, saturation, and luminance for full 3D color editing. Now to select a color, we'll use the eyedropper, but before sampling a color, notice that the color fields preview the color below the cursor, but as soon as I click on this light red swatch, the color fields display the selected color and the range of adjustments that can be made to that color. A color swatch is also added to the right of the eyedropper, and a color bar is added below the color fields. The hue and saturation can be adjusted in the larger color field, while the luminance can be shifted using the smaller rectangle. All three dimensions can also be shifted using the sliders below the color field. As adjustments are made to color, the small indicator shows the original color, while the larger white circle displays the adjusted color. The color swatch, as well as the color bar below the color fields, also display the selected color and the adjusted color. All right, once the lighter reds are adjusted, I can then use the eyedropper to select a darker red value and make adjustments with little effect on the lighter reds. Point color has additional controls. It can also customize the range of colors that are changed, whereas with the color mixer, the ranges are predefined. For example, if I use Color Mixer to adjust the green, Color Mixer defines what colors are within that green range, and I can't add or subtract colors from the range. Even if I select the Targeted Adjustment tool, and the Color Mixer selects two color ranges, the color ranges themselves are predefined by the Color Mixer. But if I select Point Color, and select a green, and then make some adjustments, I can then limit the range of colors that are affected by moving the range slider towards zero, or increase the range of colors that are affected by moving the slider towards 100. We can also see a visual representation of the colors that will be affected in the color field. But because these adjustments are subtle, I think it's much easier to see the range when we enable the Visualize Range option. Now the colors that are affected remain in color, and the others are displayed as grayscale. For even more granular control, we can use the individual range sliders. The rectangles represent the range of hue, saturation, and luminance values that will be fully affected by any adjustments. By default, the rectangles are centered over the original sample color, which is represented by the dot. But we can drag the rectangle to reposition the range, or drag the edge of the rectangle to expand or contract the range. We can also drag the tick marks to increase or decrease the fade range. The fade range determines the distance between the values that are fully affected and those that are not affected at all. So for example, to narrow the hue range of the greens that are affected, I can decrease the width of the rectangle and decrease the fade range, as well as use the range slider. I'll go ahead and uncheck Visualize Range, and we can see that when I make additional adjustments, they're now limited to a much narrower range of green. If you ever need to reset one of the ranges, you can simply double click within the slider. Now in some instances, even with the range options, it might be easier to apply point color to a portion of an image using masking. So here we have three blue color swatches that are very close in hue, saturation, and luminosity. I'll select masking, and then select objects, and drag to select the middle shape. Now the red mask overlay is going to appear over the blue rectangle with the pink star, but I only want to make changes to the blue color, so I'll use point color. We can see that all of the same options are available when we're in masking as they are when we're making global edits. And then I'll select the point color eyedropper, and notice that as soon as I do this, the overlay is hidden so that I can accurately see the color that I want to select. Then I can select my color and make my adjustments to only the single blue shape. Another great feature is the ability to add up to eight different samples using point color. In this example, I want to change the color of the circle to match the outer rectangle, and then I'm going to change both of those colors together. 
So first I'll select the color of the center circle, but because the color of the circle and the color of the rectangle are so similar to one another, when I make adjustments, they both change. So I'll reduce the hue range by reducing the size of the rectangle, and I'll decrease the fade ranges on either side. Now I can adjust the sampled color within the circle without adjusting the color in the rectangle. Now that both colors match, I can add a second point color sample and make adjustments to all of the similar colors. If I ever want to remove a color sample, I can right click or control click on Mac on a swatch and then choose to delete swatch or delete all swatches, or I can double click on the point color text to reset all of the swatches. Excellent, let's take a look at how we can apply point color to a photograph. So in this first image, I want to remove the cyan from the shadows on the top of the ice without affecting the similar blue colors below the water. If I use the color mixer, we can see that both colors are affected by the blue slider. So for more control, I'll use the point color eyedropper to select the cyan at the top area of the ice. Then I'll enable visualize range, and we can see that the cyan in the top ice will be adjusted, but so will some of that ice that's under the water. So to limit the range of colors that are adjusted, I'll adjust the hue range again, as well as the luminance. Then we can disable the preview, decrease the saturation, and we're only changing the blue in the top ice. I'll use the eye icon to view the photograph without the point color changes, and then after applying them. In the second image, I wanna remove the red undertones from my skin to make the skin more uniform, and then I'll adjust the overall skin tone. I'll use the mask icon and I'll choose select people so that I'm making adjustments to only the skin tones and not the other red colors in the image. I'll select the red on my nose, then enable visualize range so I can see exactly the values that I'll be adjusting. Now before making any adjustments, I will narrow the hue range and I'm going to contract the fade range so that it doesn't affect the yellows as much. I'll move the saturation range all the way to the right to affect the more saturated values. I'll move the luminance range to the left to affect the darker values, then I'll disable the preview. Now we can adjust the hue shift slider and lower the saturation just a bit, and then maybe lighten the luminance. So now that we've brought the colors closer together, I'll sample another area from my cheek and make an adjustment to adjust all of the similar colors. I'll shift the hue a little more towards red, and then decrease the saturation. And again, I'll use the eye icon to toggle the visibility of the changes. Now on this third image, I'll select masking again and choose to select the subject because I wanna change the blue in the building, but not in the sky. I'll move the hue towards cyan and increase the saturation and just decrease the luminance. Then I'll add another color point sampler in the light orange areas and decrease the saturation and lighten the luminance and I'll add a final color point sample in the darker oranges and shift the hues more towards red. We can use the eye icon on the mask panel to toggle the visibility of the changes. Okay, a few shortcuts before we wrap up. I'll demonstrate them in masking, but they also work when using the point color tool as a global adjustment. When dragging to make adjustments in the larger color field, hold the shift key and drag to constrain the movements to only adjust the saturation. To constrain the movements to only adjust the hue, use the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows. To enable more precise adjustments in either of the color fields, hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and drag. Finally, Option drag on Mac or Alt drag with Windows on any of the sliders to quickly see what areas are being affected. The areas that are not affected appear in grayscale. And of course, all of these changes are non-destructive and can be refined at any time. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.